Incredibly popular, yet forgotten. Admired and abandoned. Discarded in a dusty time capsule, this card waited. The 7300 GT was the king of its castle in the affordable graphics card market of 2006. For the sub $100 price point when new, it was hard to beat. Although forgotten about now, this card was within the top 10 best-selling GPUs for Tiger Direct in 2006. This was the affordable card of choice, the GT 730 and 1030 of its day. As these cards were the economical cards of choice for parents who wanted some video acceleration in their old computers, a lot of kids at the time got their start doing light gaming on a card like this, and it can indeed play older titles pretty well. With 8 shaders based off of the G73 die, this card was basically a lightly cut down version of the 7600 GT, which was a legitimate gaming card for the day. And I should know, that's what I used from 2006 until 2009. This particular 7300 GT has 256 megabytes of DDR2 with a core clock of 350 megahertz. By modern standards, it's, well, a bit of a joke, but for 2006, it was a great budget option. I'm not going to expect much from this card considering what it is, but how does it perform in games? Let's boot up some old DirectX 9 titles to find out. The first game that we tested was Fallout New Vegas at 720p low settings. We did turn up some of the draw distances, but other than that it's pretty standard fare. The 256 megabytes of video RAM buffer didn't really allow us to load in any higher textures, but at these particular settings we did get a decently playable experience with it only ever dipping down to 16 FPS on very rare occasions, and it able to hold 44 FPS most of the time. In the empty wasteland we managed to get as high as 64. These frame rates admittedly aren't impressive, but when you consider they're coming from a GPU that was affordable 11 years ago when it was new, that's actually kind of impressive. Oblivion at 1024 by 768 fared just as well. Even though the forests of Tamriel are a bit more GPU demanding than the wastes of Fallout, all it took was a resolution drop to get the game at a very playable frame rate. Just like Fallout, all of the settings were at low with the draw distances turned up. The only time frame rates tended to drop were when new assets were loading into memory, whether that be a large city or a small fort. The same can be seen in the frame time graphs. Even so, most of the time it's perfectly playable with a 55 FPS average, and when in a building or engaged in dialogue, the frame rate jumped as high as 94. Portal 2 is a bit more demanding. At 720p low, we got a 29 FPS average with it reaching as high as 56. During times of intense effects, the frame times would jump, giving the game a stuttering effect. In addition, there was a noticeable input lag which hindered the precise movement necessary to perform some of the quick puzzle chambers. Dropping the resolution would be highly recommended if you decide to play this game on this particular card. Skyrim, however, fared even worse. At the absolute minimum settings and resolution, we only achieved a 14 FPS average in Whiterun. In the fields of Skyrim, it would climb as high as 20, but it would drop as low as 8 in combat. It is clear that this card struggles with modern textures and more modern polycounts. So, if this card struggles with modern games, how does it play even older titles? Quite well, actually. In Serious Sam the Second Encounter at 1080p high settings, we got a mind-numbing 129 FPS average with it reaching a bewilderingly high 301 FPS. Even during the most intense combat with dozens of enemies and plenty of particle effects, the frame rate only ever dropped down to 51. So for older or less demanding titles, this old cut rate card is capable and competent. And speaking of competent, Minecraft 1080p low settings performed pleasantly with a perfect performance. It never dropped below VSync and would be an acceptably admissible addition to any modest Minecraft machine. Although this card is nothing you should ever go out and buy for practical purposes, it still does have its charm. The card that gave many gamers their start are now making their way to e-recyclers in record numbers. While the collectors fill their shelves with the kings of old, the admirable workhorse of yesterday is forgotten. And when the night ends and all of these cards are lost to history, we'll still remember what you did for us. A prominent card from a legendary company. The 7300 GT.